I'm going to say that the, the spawn, I, I, I can't in check what, water three, temperature, so I don't have it. Or? Yeah, they're on the yeah. edge. And it's, it's the right time for Michigan. Okay. But these look like males. They look like very active males that were still buzzing around. So I chose, and I asked them if they didn't, if they wanted to do that or if they wanted to stay out and, and troll the structure. Mm -hmm. So we chose to try to cast to some of these fish, but being with all this mossy crap, it's you hard. can't work certain baits. So you have to right. stay with a few a few types of baits. So I put Jim on a sluggo, and I worked a, uh, a torpedo, which is surface bait. And um, I had four or five solid strikes. One fish that was pretty good. But the damn torpedo, you miss a lot of fish. This morning we picked up two fish the same way in three or four feet of water. But we stayed along the edge where it dropped off to 12 yeah. feet, cast out to 12 feet, bring it back up, and we hit that lip. See, where I was, I was on the outside edge. I, I, was, in, I was over the drop off, but we were within reaching distance of all those weeds. Uh -huh. You know, we were able to cast to those weeds mm -hmm. and work our baits through them. Now, on the way in, I was trolling right through here. I would, I would have 200 right off of here. And I, I hung a hell of a fish right here. A very strong fish. Right right out here. And had a mind for just one of these two second deals where I was throwing along clean all the, whoa! <laughs> I hit him and gone, off. Amen. Power on here. Uh -huh. What we're gonna do is get on the outside edge of this weed line. You know, I bought that trailer from uh, Jack. Remember that fly bottom in? run to the outside edge here and this is where I I hung a good fish. There ain't really too much here. It's gradual and it's a weed line. What but size the, you're putting on? Putting on 200s. 200. 200. Putting on 200s. So we're gonna run at a pretty good clip. I'm gonna try and get as close to without getting too aggravated. God damn it. Fouled on the way out. Going to be contour trolling or using uh, sightings? We're going to be contour trolling right now. I'm going to contour the weed line as best as I can. Spoon plugger, and you're going to go after it the right way. And the ultimate goal of every spoon plugger is to get into the fish casting. Well, you better make sure you've got the right kind of stuff when you're casting. Because if you don't have the right kind of stuff, all the stuff that we do to get to that point is useless. Right. If you've got a spinning rod that ain't going to hold the fish, what the hell are we doing this for? I'm going to keep you out. Are you running fairly clean? Uh-huh. You out until I get past this uh -huh. See, what's the problem is there's some floating moss. Right. And I had tr trouble with some of my trolling passes where we had to keep coming in because of the floating moss. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I asked those guys if they would want to give it a shot at tr trying to cast some of those smaller fish, but, you know, it was something that they, you know, they wanted to give it a try, so. Possibilities there of popping a good fish, too. There's a big fish just splashed on something right there. I'll tell you what, what we're not seeing here, like I saw yesterday, the carp, the car I saw a ton of carp from shallow here, but they're not breaking the surface like they were on Mankatawa. What does that mean? Well, it's... it's, it's what, what, uh, it's some of that moss again. Yeah, I didn't do it. Must have come through a field of it there. Uh, 20, 22 feet of water. We're going to move up to the weed line. It's a fast break leading up to it. You can run this with 200s, 100s. It's starting to come up right now. There's a little bit of short grass growing off the bottom in 17, 18. I tried running 700s off that, that one piece of structure I worked earlier, 700s uh, mossed up. The 100s and the 200s, we were able to get them through there. Looks like this moss is growing a little bit deep. It's close to these guys. See that big floating patches of that garbage? What will happen is this is straggler fishing. We, we're not going to find a school of fish up on this edge, but you will find scattered numbers of fish. I mean, you, you, can, you can put together a hell of a nice day of fishing, just fishing this outside edge of the weed line. 
this gives the fish another thing to use, like on Macintyre. You don't have this choice. The fish are either on the brake lines or they're not there. And there ain't enough population of fish to catch uh, the little guys. All right. And this place will have good water color in about another month, you'll see. Terry said the same thing when we were back in that so we give this lake about another another month. Come back here, you'll see the water color will be totally different. Okay, now we're gonna swing out on here. Come up right to it. running 200s. I'm running about 20 to 25, I'm trying to keep a short line so we're not exposed to too much of that. Uh, I'm trying to shake that moss off. I'm running it up to about 12, and then I'm turning it out. But you can put together a nice catch of fish just on doing this. I mean, you don't even have to be that exact that you have to be on a contact point. I mean, if you can't identify the contact point, you can still, until you get to a point when, when you're confident enough that you've found the contact point, you can put together a nice catch of fish just doing this. Swinging out on it a little bit here. Might bump that one. We're gonna hit it perfect. See it on the screen there? Yep. Uh -huh. Came right off to 21 feet of water. The top of that thing was at 10. And our lures dragged right across it. Construction. You know, you can visualize what I'm trying to tell you or what my boat is doing a lot better by watching it on so this. So you prefer the LCR? Yeah. Well. It, you can visualize. Yeah. You know, it's a good tool and an aid to the guys that are trying to learn. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going to contour a fish. Yeah. See now, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can look at this. A lot of guys would try to find the fingers on this thing, but you know, if, if you're if you're comfortable with the way you can handle the boat, and you, you got the feel for the lake, you can take your contouring deeper. I mean, yeah. you don't have to stop it at eight to ten feet. You can take it all the way down if you comfortable enough and you don't mind every once in a while having an accident where you're slamming into a weed line. There ain't nothing wrong with that. A lot of big fish are caught that way by, you know, contouring because you got real close to the structure. Or you got real close to the weed line because you're trying to follow it that close. Yeah, it can be a pain in the butt. Because you know you, you'll have a lot of reeling in, you know, and if you're not, uh, if it's a real tough lake with a real erratic weed line, you're going to have to drop markers and pick up some sights, or you're going to be, you know, spending a lot of time reeling in. That's why you never want to make your moves too drastic. Uh -huh. You know, your turns. Try to try to keep them as gentle, and as gentle tragic. as you can. But I mean, sometimes if you get into trouble, you know, you try to bail yourself out, so you got to make up. Quick one, but don't try to contour it like this. You know, every every turn, you'll never do that. Right. There's a fine line to trying to contour, and it's gradually get yourself into it, and then don't make erratic turns. You know, try to try to just be smooth when you make your turns. I hit this one real nice. Oh, there's a good fit. Oh, he ripped off. Oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> Hung a good one there. Did you see I that? Saw him. Oh, I, yeah. Did you see yeah, that, Chase? I saw the rod. Damn. Fish. Yeah, now, would, would you go back and. Oh, uh, you're absolutely going to go back. Are you okay. kidding me? I want to run this a little farther down. Jeez. Darn, that was a good fish. And then, you know, and, and if, like yesterday, I was hitting a lot of fish like that. But I know they were rough fish because I felt them come down my line and then I'd hit them. So I was preparing for that. That's a week. 
Let's pull them in so we can go back over. I don't want to lose too much sight in that. When you just get all of a sudden you're running along, and, and I mean I'm not, I'm not, we're not close to the weed line there. We're off it. I was clean. We're in 14, 15 feet of water, and you get a nice wham. Yeah. Now, I hit some moss as we came off this end. are there. I mean, the hooks are there. I've actually had that happen on the chain, but we've come in and the belly hook is gone. I had it happen with O'Malley last year. I lost some real good fish. I was with him. Lost some real good fish. Halfway in, gone. Bring the damn lure in the 250, the belly hook's gone. Go ahead, run them out. How much line are you using? I was running about uh, 22 maybe. You can run between 20 and 25. I'm going to run 25 to 30. All right, that was a nice fish. Boy, oh boy, that makes me mad. I want to chase to get that puppy on film. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I think you might have gotten when that fish struck, though. Were you filming then? Uh, yeah, I was filming. Yeah, I'm, I'm shooting a lot. Darn it. Right off of that pontoon. That one, that one with that red thing on it there. See, she's coming up right now. We might, it might be a better pass for me when I'm going the other way. I gotta see how it looks here. We're at 18, 17, 16, 15. I'm gonna pick up the speed a little. 15. Sixteen, fifteen. There's a big fish right there at fifteen. Hanging right to the bottom. Another one. May have to come back over this for one hundred. We'll make another pass back on this little back on this little area with the two hundred, so we're gonna go to one hundred. Matter of fact, next pass, what I'll do is I'll be on the inside with a two. You're going to go to a 100 on the outside. I don't know if those are game fish, but there's fish that are holding right on the base of that thing. We're going to find out, though. Now, if you're running 15 feet and you're using a 200, aren't you a little bit up above the 15 bottom? 15 feet? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You were oh, saying 15. 15 feet. Yeah, well, I was, run I was running into 15. Uh, but coming shallow, like right now we're 15, 14, 13. Oh, okay. Because the 200 would stay uh, 9 to 12. Right. That's why I'm saying th this pass, I didn't get in as tight as I did on the other pass. The other pass, I saw a lot of 11 and 12, which we're seeing right now, 11, 12, 10. Well, you know, sometimes you, you know it's hard to recreate the same pass when you're going the other way. Got a good one going here on this end of it. 10 foot right up on the top, 12, 13, 14, 13, 12, 10. Do you have any special thoughts about color? No, you know, on these clear days, I do well with silvers and brasses, um, yellows, red and whites, anything with white. You know, but it, you, you, you've got to fish the lake and catch fish on the lake to come up with a, a, a preference. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'd be, uh, I have certain lakes that I seem to have better luck with certain colors on. But you can't determine it until you've caught fish. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Now I want you to run about uh, 25 to 30. We're going to keep it a little deeper. I'm going to run about 20 to 25. We're going to worm our way right in here. 
You're talking 20 to 25 feet out? 20 or to 25 yards. Yards, right. yards out. Every color is 10 yards. Those guys are a little bit inside of where you want to go anyway, so. Well, I hope they are. We're right on it again, man. We're right there. We're right on it. 15, 16, 14. Shit, they're on it. Are you going to predict we catch a fish at a certain point like Buck does? Pushing me off here. <laughs> Right above where we hung this one. Okay, now we're on it right here. We're on it right here, Joe. All right, man. That's it. Speed a little bit. Hitting the crud, guys. Might have a little bit of a chore here. Right on it. Looks good. It's not super steep. It's got a little bit of a gradualness to it, so that. Not straight up and down. I'm gonna turn out a little bit here because I'm gonna be in trouble with this guy. You're fishing the base of the of the weed line as a break? We're we're fishing right now. It's actually we're not even on the weed line. What we're fishing is it's like a series of little fingers that come off right there. They break down into 20 feet of water. 21 feet of water. And there is weeds on them, but they're on the uh, only up, the weeds are only up to about maybe 12. Yeah, there's 12 foot I came up to right there. We're going back down, 17, 16, down to 20. Coming up again. Moon's coming on and off weed line, looking for stragglers, and okay, now we came up, let the swing out here. You're fishing a depth level rather than the weed line itself now? Right. Okay. A big fish on the end of that sucker too. Good, good film show. We're hitting it well. We are hitting it well. Yours are running clean. You're still running good? Great. Wait for that big jerk. Oh, if you think I'm going to pull on your line, you're kidding. <laughs> We're not going all the way up to the weed line. We're going up to 12. There, I think it's somewhere. Structures, I mean, like on certain lakes, like we don't know this lake that well yet. You, you know that there's good pieces of structure on there that you can go right to, but don't ignore these weed lines and these subtle breaks that are, you know, off of these straightaway shorelines like this that don't have a big piece of structure on them. Because there's deep water in the area. In this lake, there's 30 feet of water off the end of all of these things. You can have straggler fish or smaller schools of fish that relate to subtle things along the edges of these. And you won't find them unless you're running this shit. You don't run it, you ain't never going to find them. The only fish you're going to find are the ones that you're going to be fishing for all the time, and that's on the on the, the most pronounced structures. You know, this is where we come into this thing that uh, Terry and I were fishing. I was on the outside of it. Terry was up on the inside of it. So we're going to go into the turn here. We're going to go into it. 
into a turn. There's the weeds. Turn it right here. almost see the change in the water color up there as to where that big uh, yeah, yep ah. so you were reeling in and caught it yeah right in the yeah. turn we right. stopped the boat up on the edge of the weeds yeah. and drag the lures through the deeper part of the turn. I just got done telling you, a lot of times you get them on the, on the retrieve in these turns. And he struck right in the turn. You know, I, thought, I thought I was dragging by him when he hit I saw. I think I saw him hit it. Yeah, I think he might have. I don't know, I have to use the pliers on this thing. Chartreuse comes through again. Do you use chartreuse a lot? Yeah, yeah I do well with chartreuse. Down hard. Shouldn't need jaw spreaders for you, little guy. Yeah. Little guy, maybe yeah. 22. Yeah, it got pulled right through his foot. 22 it? or 24. There he goes. He's happy. Oh, right where he belonged, anyway. Right where he belonged. Uh, Jim and I were casting, and you've got your casting rod, right? We, um, I raised quite a few fish up in this, up on the top of this thing. Jim caught one. I had one on and lost, and Jim had one on and lost. I'm gonna have to come up in the front there, though, Joe. You'll have to come. That's what led me up here. That's how I found this. Because we're spoon plugging, but. On a clear day when the sun is shining, you can use the sun as your guide to help you find the, the, the outline of the structure. And you can see it here. Or here's the top of it here. It's, it's white. And the, the drop off is to the left of me. What we've got is this is like a big mushroom. And the stem goes back there. That's the shallow part. And there's deep water on all the sides of this sucker. Joe, throw out this way. Yeah, a little bit more to the left. He came up and he was checking out this sluggo. Is that a floater? This is uh, kind of a, it's, it's, it's a sluggo. It's a four inch sluggo. It's almost like a neutrally buoyant weight. You know, it's now, got that you, now that you get up here and see the weeds right there, let's figure out why it's there. It's a big weed bed that he's right on. Oh, he was right on my bait. He came right up to it, and that was a bigger fish. It had to be a female on a bed. Had to be. Had to be a female. That was the biggest one I've seen so far up here. But see, the problem is, in the clear water, when you're fishing the shallow stuff, sometimes they're very, you know, they're very spooky. You know, I'm staying in relation to the deep water. The deep water is to our left and way out to the right. And what's happening is Joe's casting up on the top the Rapala, and I'm trying to work semi the edge, but I'm staying shallow. This this thing, I can let this thing flutter down to the bottom, and all it is, it's a soft plastic twitch bait, is what it could, you could call it. Soft plastic twitch bait. It's real good for non-active fish. It's uh, you can use it as a slow, subtle presentation, or you can use it in a quick presentation, which you can. Uh, if, if anybody's familiar with working a Zara spook. You can work one of these the same way you would a Zara spook. Now that presentation would only be used when fish are active, you know. When you're into active fish and they're pouncing on it, or you need to you need to come into something a little bit with a, uh, a little quicker retrieve, that's when you go to that presentation. Coming up 
on it right now. He's little, pick it up, pick it up. Three bass. See him swimming away? Now I got the pole rights on. Oh, he might have hit it. Pulled it off the damn... Uh, might have picked it up. That's the only thing wrong. That's why you can't work too many baits in this stuff. This moss is brutal. There's your sluggo rig right there. Oh, yeah. Here, let's see. I'm getting focus it in. It's is that, is that virtually weedless? weedless, yeah. Okay. Virtually weedless. Uh, but any, any, not anything is really mossless. <laughs> yeah. There's, and there's a lot of moss happening right now, so that's one of the problems that you got. You got a bluegill bed happening right here. Oh, yeah. If you can see it. You see the bluegills on it. Which they're normally after the bass. They come after. Bluegill spawn after the bass? Yeah. Usually. And you know, if that's a beginning one, that's the first bluegill bed I've seen. Now, Terry was saying that he doesn't even think this year is, is much spawn at all. Well, that, that could be true. You know, with if you have several cold fronts, it doesn't mean the fish have to come up and go through their their natural instinct to spawn. It's, there's no doubt about it. That's how you find in lakes, you see gaps in fish. Like, you, you can catch... Uh, 10 and 12 inch fish, but you, you don't catch anything between 12 and 16. Then it, you don't catch any fish, 13, 14, or 15, but then you get 16 and 17s, and then you don't get any 18s or 19s, but you get them over 20. Well, those are gaps in the spawn. Then something wasn't right that year. Either the fish didn't move shallow enough to spawn, or something was wrong with water levels, depending on what kind of body of water you're fishing. Look at this, look at this. And a walleye. I set a walleye up on my sluggo. <laughs> right up to the edge of it, right up to the boat. He didn't hit it, he was right behind it. Maybe about 15 inches. Saw that little white tail. We're coming around the back side of it now. Now, I didn't work this, but the depth is still over here. Matter of fact, Joe, what are you reading on the, on the unit there? Seven? Eleven. Eleven? See, that's good. We still got some depth back here. Now, there's other presentations you can use here. Um, I mean, you can go to uh, a jig, I mean, which is another way to work this area very well. But with the moss, it's, it's going to be hard. You're going to be cleaning your jig off every cast. Because the minute you come in contact with that weed, those weeds, you're going to be picking up this garbage. And here's what I'm talking about, Chase. You see the, the stuff that's starting to form on the surface here? Yeah, little pieces. See that stuff? That is the start of what the bloom is going to end up being. See how it's kind of like, a, you can almost see it's like a trail. That's almost like a duckweed? Oh, you could almost say that. It, it, it's starting to form. It's still a ways off here. But the stuff is starting to form. I mean, you can see it in the shallows, the cricks. They're all full of it already. Now you can go, go if you want to a surface bait. Like I got a torpedo you could throw it's, uh, in that little box. I had a lot of strikes on the torpedo earlier. I mean, if you're looking for something to use. No, I was looking for another shot to put on here. Got another sh got one shot somewhere. You know what? I don't have that box with me. <laughs> staying away from it. You know, I wouldn't spend a, a ton of time doing this, but, um, you know, it's a little, a little change up here. We caught some fish over here earlier, and we saw fish here. I mean, obviously, there's a few fish around. This is where you caught that one. That's right here. Just working around to the back side of this puppy. How about you? You see it doesn't break back here. You still got that back here. We're gonna try and get us up a little closer. You can see it on the on to your right here. Can you see this, Joe? This is where the bar is. It's right here. Yeah, right. And 
that's where the bar is. That's another thing. Bass don't always spawn on the shore. This is a kind of like a yeah. detached piece of structure from the shore. And if, if it has everything that's conducive to spawning on it, they don't have to even know that the shore exists. Yeah, we're up on the back side of it right now. See, now if you didn't have a lot of moss, if you didn't have a lot of moss, you'd be able to, to cast a spoon plug, crankbait, whatever tool you wanted to throw right up to the edge and crank it down along the edge here. And that would be a great presentation for active fish or for summertime pattern. So you'd anchor in that case and? You you could, you definitely could anchor, but you gotta remember now, we don't, we haven't determined this to be any kind of a contact point or anything. So one of the things that, that we'd be doing right now, basically would be covering the water, but we'd be working the structure much more thoroughly by, by taking the casting presentation. So you can cover water with spoon plug casting and, and not necessarily anchor. Absolutely. You know, you don't always, you know, when Terry referenced to, to anchoring yesterday, what he meant was, if you're, if you're confident in an area that it's a contact point, don't go over it with the trolling motor. Get yourself to proper anchoring position and work it thoroughly. Pick up the anchor, move it again, and work it again. But right now, this is a different time. This is still early in the season. And like I said, we caught a few fish up here. I'm not, I'm not confident enough to, to anchor up here and to do anything with an anchor yet, because I haven't found anything that would tell me that I need to put the anchor down. But if I if I caught a big fish here, it's darn right that I'd be putting the anchor down mm -hmm. to see if there's anything else around. If you want to change, Joe, just let me know. You can virtually see. Now, Terry was saying something about in the shallow areas, like he was trolling the inside edge of the weed line. Right. Uh, he actually would cast that first and then troll it because he might spook the fish if they're up. Right, and that's true. And, I, and I've gotten into them where I couldn't get them. I couldn't get them on the cast, but the speed presentation wasn't right. And I was able to drag 500s on the inside edge of the weed line and catch a dozen fish. I got one up on there now. Hit it. As soon as it landed on the water, a little, little squirt. Now you can Shy see a lot more than I can. can I have, see? Can you see my bait at all? I have Polaroids, no. No, I can see it real well. Is there a difference in Polaroid glasses? Well, these are uh, polarized uh, Jimmy Houston. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they are. <laughs> Colin Martin. These are the ones you get with the helicopter lure kit that I bought. Oh. Gave to uh, O'Malley for Christmas. Oh, you! <laughs> I um, bet he loved that. He loves that stuff. That's going to rank right along top the, uh, the Terry O'Malley Signature Series uh, Easy In Catheter. <laughs> now you're just kind of jumping that, right? Yeah. Well, what it is, it's because it's like a neutrally buoyant paint. It has no action on its own. If I reeled this thing in straight, it wouldn't do anything. It comes straight in. Mm -hmm. But because it's neutrally buoyant, when I twitch it, it, it darts through the water, erratically, either way. Okay, it, it just darts through the water, and then when I stop, you know, the, the pull, it slowly sinks. So it's a, it's a darting, neutrally buoyant bait that will, it, it stays neutrally buoyant for a, a couple seconds, and it gradually sinks. It's got a real slow sink. So you can control your depth by just letting it sink a little bit. Oh, more. yeah. I mean, this is a great slow presentation lure if you don't want to get tangled into the moss, and that's... That's my whole purpose of fishing this thing right now. The only problem is they, you know, they occasionally get, um, you know, torn up, so you have to replace them. They, they got you hooked pretty well too with these things if you use them a lot. Down there, remember I was telling you we're seeing big crappies? Big, big, big crappie, right up here. Hmm. Matter of fact, I'll pull over this to see if you can get a shot of this guy, Chase. Joe, you got glasses? Oh, you don't have glasses on. You'll never see him. Chase, look. I can see. Look right down the end of my rod. Can you see the silhouette of him? See the silhouette? He's just looking right at us now. He's right in down in the weeds, right down there. Let's see oh, gosh. Big crappies. Yeah, he's right here. 
Let's see if I turn sideways if you can see. There goes one up down to see the shadow. I don't know. There I he is. He's right there. I don't know if you can see him. I, I can't seem to spot him, but. There's not a lot, you know, I'm not, we're not seeing schools of those suckers. Huh. But I'll tell you what, there are some big crappies in this lake. Kind of jerking it real fast repetitively. Yeah. That, that's just a for, different form of speed control, right? Yes, it is. Uh, sometimes it'll trigger a strike, uh, you know, on a, but on a real inactive fish, it seems like that slow presentation is better. But, you know, on, you know, if the fish are active, a uh, quick, quick pace, quick pace, Chase, it's tough to beat. Mm-hmm. Now, Terry was saying last night that, uh, the, it went a uh, jump lure is from zero speed when it's, when it's still when it's sitting still when it when that lure hits the hits the bottom when you're throwing a jump type lure and hits the bottom it can't go any slower than that because it's laying on the bottom it's not moving so can you say that you're covering all the speeds from the jerk to zero uh, well I wouldn't say you could reach top speed obviously no no I mean from the the jerk speed oh, down yeah. to zero yeah you're you are you are you're, you're basically gonna, if, if the fish is active, he'll hit it on, on the move. Mm -hmm. If fish are inactive, they'll come up to it and check it out while it's laying on the bottom. So sometimes you should wait a little bit if you want to try real slow? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I mean, you mean in between lifts? Yeah, right. Absolutely. There's some more of these big specks in these weeds. Right in the weeds, let's see if you can see this one. There's only a one, but he's a big one. See that floating shit right there? Yeah. See underneath it? Can you see the silhouette of the fish? Oh yeah. You see him there? That's a big yeah. crappie. Jeez. You see him? You see him sitting there? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> right there. Right there. Right under there. Right down there. Right down there in my rod. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's a big crappie. Okay. <laughs> I think I got to get new glasses. <laughs> Either that or we'll get you a seeing eye dog. Chase. Yeah, right. Maybe that'd be good. <laughs> Ever heard of blind casting? You might have to fish by braille. <laughs> that might be another invention. Man, I'm thinking of everything. Right. Today. We have the Terry O'Malley Easy Wing Catheter. <laughs> we can have the Chase fishing by braille. Home study course. Right. There's Rocky going with Jim. Yeah, he dropped some markers off. And he's working on the inside. He's working the inside? Yeah, he's working on the back side of it. I was working on the outside of it when we uh, when we caught our fish. Now, the back side, that wouldn't be the closest to the deep water, would it? Well, see, the problem is you got deep water here, too. On so the side? You got 40-foot hole on this side. Oh. You got 50 feet or whatever on that side. So okay. you could have two different schools of fish that don't even know that each other exists. The school of fish that's living in here don't even know that this, this part of the lake exists because they got everything that exists right here. I see. Okay. They got spawning habitat. They got deep water. They got structure to move on. Do you usually go for the deeper, deepest hole, or do you say, well, if it goes to 35 or 40, deepest you're all set? Deepest water in the area. If it has spawning habitat, if it has spawning habitat, and it has structure for the fish to use to relate to, something to move on, and the deep water is there, it's the deepest water in the area. And there could be several areas with deep water in it in a lake. That's why you can't, you know, only determine it. If there, it's only by the deepest water in the lake. But how how big do you define an area? In other words, uh, it does well, depend on the size of the structure or lake. Or you could take a look at this this whole bay here. I mean, this this is a good sized bay. Yeah. Okay. You got a 40 foot hole here. You got structure here. You've got spawning habitat along the shores. Mm -hmm. You know, you got two two. Uh, they, all the shallows here seem to be have some hard bottom. So I mean, there's there's no reason for these fish. They would have, they would have no decision to make to go anywhere else. So this is the area. This is the, this is where they live and die. Is in this deep couple water. acres or whatever. Right. All right. We're gonna we're gonna pick up out of here and get out. And just finish this cast. This side that we saw on that side. Saw so more on the outside of yeah. edge of it. On that side of it. Okay. Uh, do you, do you kind of, if you see fish on the scope, of course, that means that that's an area where there are fish. So that's an area where you will 
work more, right? Well, yeah, that's true. You mean on my electronics? Yeah. That is true, but you got to remember, all the fish you see on your electronics, it don't mean that they're the game fish. Yeah. So if you if you use that as your barometer to to uh, finding active fish or finding fish, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Okay. Yeah. The best way to find out was that a fish I just heard jumping. I thought I heard something there. You know that they're there. Mm-hmm. Pull up. This was a spawning area. Like we're on the top of this piece of structure here, this sunken island or yeah. whatever this is. I'll do this and spot for beds. Right. You know, look for look for bass. I mean, they do this in the south. Guys that fish uh, looking for spawning bass. They, yeah. I've seen guys on the Lake Fork on a ladder in the front of the boat on a six-foot ladder on the top, Oof. looking for beds. And they got everything shaded off here like this. Or, you know, they got shit on their heads. And the height works. They do that. You get up high like that. Oh yeah. Let's see. There's a big black crappie. Oh, look at that bass. Look oh, at yeah. that bass. Yeah, oh yeah, beauty. That's a gorgeous one. See, even the silver ones are still up here. That was a big bass. That was a three to four pounder. That was a three to four pounder and a big black crappie. Big black crappie. You see that? Did you see <laughs> that crappie? It's on boat, yep. Make sure it's sucking like too shallow over here. And some of the panfish, like I'll, I got some lakes where we'll find a bluegill spawning and catch 30 or 40, and they love that. You know, they go nuts. Yeah. The panfish, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you keep the kids very busy, they're one after another. Get them started in fish. Oh, yeah. How do you fish them? Just bobber and live bait? I fish with a, a, a small bobber. I fish an ice spike, you know, an ice, ice spoon or a little tiny ice jig and uh, maggots. In the summertime? Absolutely. How many there? And you know you gotta adjust your depth, but uh, it's a de deadly, big, big, big bluegills and crappies too. I catch crappies on them. All right.